So on August 5th, 2014, yeah. you guys start filming yeah. straight out of Compton. Yeah. Seven days later, there's a drive-by shooting on set. Yeah, and you know, it was crazy because I remember us walking from um from base camp to to set, right? And they always got like cop cars and shit taped off or whatever, just to make sure, you know, people don't just come onto the set. So they got a guy out there laid out. Cop cars are there and shit. And um, they're like, no, nah, you got to go around. And we like, hey, we part of the movie. You know what I mean? You don't see the get up. You know what I mean? And he was like, this ain't a part of the movie. We was like, what the fuck, man? It was crazy because all of these people who are out watching this happen, it didn't hit them that, it, that this wasn't part of the movie. So they literally watched this broad daylight killing. And then it wasn't until like 20 minutes later that everybody was like, oh, my God, this is real. You know what I mean? Which was kind of crazy. I had never experienced no shit like that before. Well, yeah. According to reports, uh, a group of men that were standing outside the Compton courthouse mm -hmm. flashed, flashed gang signs at a car that was passing by. Mm -hmm. People in the car pulled out guns and just started shooting. Right. And one person, <laughs> one person got hit. Was he killed? I believe so. Okay. I believe so. Right. Yeah. No one you know, around the production was hurt, but... The production was supposed to be right there. So exactly. here you are seeing this insanity in, in Compton, and it's like, yo, what the hell? Yeah, it was crazy. I was just like, you know, for me, because there were some things about the gang culture that, like, you know, I had to learn and go study myself. But a lot of stuff production to help you out with, right? Like, if you feel like you need a dialect coach or you feel like you need a nutritionist, whatever, like, you know, they'll help you out with that. But I asked him, you know, like, can y'all bring me, you know, to where Easy is from? Like, can I go to Kelly Park and can I go to these different? And they're like, hell no. Nah. <laughs> you definitely can't do that. Like, it's it's too serious. And I was like, you know, I'm from a dangerous city. Like, come on, man. Like, it can't be that bad, right? So I remember going down there, like, by myself. I ended up getting somebody else to take me, right? So we go. And I see Piru Street for the first time. And I'm like, oh, this is where Piru comes from. So I get out of the car to take a selfie. And everybody's like, no, 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 no. Get back in the car. Like, no, we can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, you're taking this shit too far. So I'm like, what is happening? Like, I don't see nobody outside. And it was like, yeah, because they got laws that literally, if you're three or more people standing outside in these neighborhoods, they could just come pat you down. Because the gang shit is crazy. You know? And at first, I think I was taking it very, very lightly until... You know, we saw that, and that shit was a trip. I'm like, it's crazy, you know what I mean? Because it, it's really as simple as, hey, where you from, homie? And then if you feel like you from a gang set and they about to back out on you, you just back out on them, and they just start shooting at each other instantly just off those few introduction words, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which is, it, it was it was kind of a culture shock for me. You know, it was, it was, it was crazy. I didn't see some violence, but that shit was different. Well, yeah, I remember my first interview with Lil Easy. This was, this was before Vlad TV. This was like maybe 2006 when I was still doing DVDs, and he asked me to meet him at his at you know Easy's grandparents' house. Right, right, right. In, in Kelly Park, I believe. Yeah, right? yeah. So, so I pull up, and I'm you know this was I'm broke. I'm by myself. I'm holding the camera. Right. You know, I have I have no one with me. I, I have no weapons on me. Nothing. But okay, I'm getting this interview. Right. Right. So, so we pull up, and you know he he comes outside. He meets me. You know we find a little spot. You know by the car that we're gonna film him outside. And I'm, I'm I always remember this. Me and him actually talked about this in our interview. Before the interview started, someone walked up to him and handed him a pistol. He he took the pistol in his, you know, in his pants. Mm -hmm. This is all off camera. This is not him fronting for the camera, right? Right. He he took took the pistol in his pants and we start doing the interview and every few seconds as he's talking, he's like right turning around. His, right. his head is on a swivel. Right. And I'm filming this going like where the fuck am I right now? And <laughs> how come I don't have a gun? Right. And, and what, what what what's about to happen? Like, is a drive by about to happen right now? Because clearly, he's he's aware of a level of danger that's happening in his, you know, in his own neighborhood. Exactly. And, and, I, and I always remember this. I remember he he ties like, oh yeah, well yeah, no, he's like, yeah, I think the gun was there so I could protect you, you know, just in case and something, right. something, something. But it's like 
you're right. It's that type of environment in Compton like that. Yeah, you got to damn near have like a, a, a recon swivel. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you got to have damn near this, this, this army level of thinking, like, because it could happen at any time. And that's how it is. Like, people wait for you to, to put your guard down so they can fucking hop out or come out, you know, the cut of somebody's house or whatever. And, and it's, you feel extra responsible when you bring people into your world. You know what I mean? And you like, cause I, I got to go to that same house actually, but again, couldn't get out the car. Cause they're like, how are we going to explain this to, to production if some shit happened to you, you know? And it's just, it's it's sad that we go through this in, in, in our neighborhoods, man. That's why like, when I first watched the movie in LA and you saw those two rags get tied together and held up, like I seen real gang members crying, like, because it's so real. Like, so many of them done been lost. Like, you know, so many of them have been killed. Like, think about Nipsey. Even, like, after all that he's done, you still not safe in your own neighborhood. Like, that's where shit happens to you. And it's just, it's scary, man. It's scary. Well, you guys are working on the movie, and Dre and Cube and Yella are all heavily involved in it. Yeah. They're on set all the time and everything else like that. And there was this one instance when uh, you were at Roscoe's with your mom and your stepdad yeah. and Dr. Dre pulls up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, he calls and he's like, bro, where you at? And I'm like, I'm at Roscoe's with my mom, you know, my stepdad. And he's like, did you drive? And I'm like, nah. He was like, good, I'm gonna send a car. Y'all gonna meet me at Jimmy's. I'm like, okay. You know, so I'm like trying to absorb this, right? So we walk out, get in the car. So we go to Jimmy's, right? And um, when we open the door, like I had never met Jimmy Iovine at this time. So they open the door and there's like a, a guy in a polo shirt, you know, and he's like, how you doing? You know, so I, I reached for his hand. I'm like, how you doing? He was like, right this way. You know, I'm like, what the hell? You know what I mean? And then we get to the next person that has on like a polo shirt and like, right this way. I'm like, who has staff at their crib, you know? So as we walking down the hallway, I could hear my voice and it was the hospital scenes, right? So I'm telling my mom, I'm like, yo, I think that's my voice. That's my voice. And like, by the time we got to the end of the hallway and we could see the TV, I already had tears in my eyes, right? And Dre just starts cracking up laughing. Like, I knew we was going to get him. I knew he was going to get him. And, um, yeah, man, that was that was my first time seeing those hospital scenes with Dr. Dre, Jimmy Iovine, you know, his wife and kids just sitting there on his couch, like chilling in his crib. And it blew my mind, man. It really did. Like, and that's a moment I'll never forget, for sure. For sure. I'm super thankful for those guys. 